What's going on guys, it's Brandon back here for another BFR. The halfway point of the season has just passed us as on January 22nd. Uh, at 8pm the Hawks played in Minnesota against the Minnesota Wild. And they lose 4-3 in overtime, they get a point. They blew two leads this game. And yeah, it's a game they should have won. So that's, it, that's how it is, it's a game they should have won. They moved to 15-19-7. and uh, Borgstrom was in, Harden was out, Caleb Jones was in, Kara and Stillman are out injured. Uh, shots were 44 to 36 Minnesota, hits were 19, or 19 to 14 uh, Chicago, and faceoffs were 38 to 30 uh, Chicago. And um, the power play one for one for Chicago, Minnesota two for five. It was really two for six since one was a double minor. Uh, Lankinen saves 40 out of 44. Great night from him. Kakinen, 33 out of 36. And let's we'll get right into this. Uh, Lafferty was on the second line. There's not much to, There's not much events that happened this game. There were a lot of penalties, but other than that, a lot of penalties, a lot of goals, not many, you know, and a lot of scrums. That's kind of how it went. Uh, it's a compl completely different start for the Hawks compared to uh, the previous game. Hawks were controlling the play early, scramble in front of the Hawks net. Lankinen was able to cover it up. Good save on Borkstrom, but then at 10:09, it's a on, on the rebound. It's a Chicago deflection goal from Henrik Borkstrom. It's third of the season from Gustafson to make it one nothing. So good to see Borkstrom getting on the board. Uh, it was reviewed for high sticking, and it was a, it was a good goal. So uh, and then that previous Lincoln and save just two, it was also reviewed. So they had already two reviews in the first 10 minutes of the game. Then at four at seven oh seven fifty six, there's a scrum in front of the Hawks net again. There were a lot of scrums in front of the Hawks net. Kakinen had a great save on Taze, and then you know it was a lucky backwards kick. It could have been three nothing Chicago, which could have put him away, and he was able to keep it out. Uh, which when I say it could be three nothing because at four twenty two, Minnesota penalty to Caprice off for high sticking. Uh, the power play looked good because at two fifty three, it's a Chicago power play goal from Alex Dabrinkit, his twenty fourth of the season from Seth Jones and Strom to make it 2-0. Uh, the Hawks are getting to the front of the net, and there were a lot of whistles in this game, that was for sure. Then at 36.7 it's a it's 36.7 seconds, it's a Chicago penalty to Gustafson for tripping. It was a bad call. It was a hip check. He didn't trip him whatsoever, but it's a penalty either way. And then 7 seconds into that power play for Minnesota at 29.1 seconds, it's a Minnesota goal from uh, Joel Eriksson Eck, who is 12th of the season, from Spurgeon and Zuccarello. And there was no chance for Lincoln, in, so they're going into the second period uh, at, with it, the score at 2-1. Uh, early in the second, DeHaan saves a goal. Uh, great save on Kaprizov by uh, Lankin. And then at 14:01, it's a Chicago penalty to Kurishev for tripping, which was we had again another bad call. The stick never tripped him. He never tripped him. He simply fell down with Kurishev trying to get the puck away from him, and they called it tripping. So refs over two on that those calls today for against Chicago. And uh, it was a back and forth game that was starting to happen at this point. Uh, Lincoln had a good save, and then at 3:05, it's a Chicago penalty to McKay for interference, which was killed. And it was this was the first real penalty, and of course, the, then the announcers believed that that wasn't a penalty. So I thought ah, that's that's ironic. And then there was another scrum, and uh, and then after that another scrum, uh, and then after that another scrum in front of the Hawks. Not these teams don't like each other, and they still play each other two more times, including once I believe next week. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how that this keeps going. Uh, so, and then Lincoln, uh, another scrum in front of the Hawks net, Lincoln was able to cover it up, and we go to the third, where Debrickett was drilled in the back by Hardman, no penalty whatsoever, and ta and then at Taze uh, gets as angry at Hardman, so he, like, does it like a little bump at him, and then he hits him against the boards, and then Taze gets the penalty for hooking somehow at 12.26, and it's killed, but he gets hooking and unsportsmanlike, so it's a double minor. And the unsportsmanlike was for banging his stick against the penalty box boards as he was walking in. So, I, 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 I don't even know how to react to that besides, like, what the hell, NHL. You gotta do better than that. If that's a penalty, if, if showing frustration and anger is a penalty, then it, it, it's just bad. Uh, then an icing went on call for Minnesota. Uh, the, the hooking penalty would be killed, but at 9.15, it's a Minnesota power play goal for Cairo Kaprizov. His 17th of the season from Zuccarello and Spurgeon. And then 
Uh, Kaprizov, I was noticing, he was doing get, getting a lot of takeaways. He's pretty slick with the puck, and I was liking the way he was playing his game. Lafferty then nearly scored. Uh, Kakinen thought he ha- he had it uh, as at 7:57. It's a Chicago goal from Henrik Borgstrom again, his second of the game from Entwistle and Carpenter to make it 3-2. As people as Kakinen thought he had it, and the Hawks six were just banging into him, and it just slowly drifted into the net through his pads. So it gave restored the 3-2 lead for the Hawks. And Kakinen thought he had it. He was angry, that, and he believed that there should have been a whistle earlier, but there wasn't. So the Hawks catch a break there. Then Minnesota empties the net at three in between 3:20 and 3:15, and at 2:04 it's a Minnesota empty net. It's a with the empty, with the extra skater empty net goal. Sorry about that. With the empty net goal from Kevin uh, Kevin Fiala, his tenth of the season from Greenway and Goligoski to make it 3-3. And it was a bad rebound by Lankin, and that's the only way to put it. Lankin gave up a, a bad rebound right to Fiala, and it just went put it right into the back of the net, and then. We go to then before we go to overtime, Lankin had made a good save. So we go to overtime, and at four twenty, at four seventeen of overtime, Chicago penalty to Kane and Minnesota penalty to Kaprizov. So the penalties offset. Kane got one for hooking, which never happened. And even in the play, I rewatched the play. There was no hooking whatsoever by Kane, but Kaprizov did high stick Kane, and Kane went down. So I'm kind of confused why Kane had a penalty. And then, then. What happened when, but while that was being called, uh, Erickson X shot the puck into the Hawks' net after the play was blown dead. Jones didn't like it. He went over there, and so did Debrickett. And then Kaprizov comes over, and all of them were on top of each other, and essentially had another scrum behind the Hawks' net. And then Kakinen made a good save on a deflection. Wild nearly had a two-on-one in overtime, but that was stopped. Uh, it was a very slow overtime, but at 37.9 seconds left in overtime, it's a Minnesota goal from Marcus Foligno, his 16th of the season, from Greenway and Goligoski, and Minnesota wins 4-3 in overtime. So on, on another another game that they needed to win, another game that they couldn't win, and another game that they lost in overtime or shootout that racks it up to seven. So that could be seven more points that they could have on their record, and probably could be about right here if they were able to win some more of those overtime games. They're only three points behind Winnipeg. Uh, changes in the standings, nothing much. Flyers have dropped down to last in that division. And Nashville and St. Louis keep swapping. And then Vancouver and Edmonton at this point are just swapping because Edmonton has won their first game in a century. But So, yeah, that's really all I have for you guys today. Next game is tomorrow uh, against Colorado. I, I'm not sure, I don't remember if it's in Colorado or at home. I believe it's at 8 p.m., but don't uh, quote me on that. But I think that's all I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.